Hey guys, should be live, should be live, everything should be okay. Fingers crossed. So I can see there's a few people waiting already. I, I always appreciate those of you who do that. Um, so yes, got another laptop here, guys. Another laptop. And I'll just close that off. Um, yes, so I bought a gaming laptop and you know, whenever I, whenever I get something like this, I'm always thinking, do I just get a video, you know, record the video, edit it, and then present it all nice and polished. But I always enjoy the live unboxings as well. They're always a lot of fun. Hey, Hugh. I'm at it again. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. I have another laptop. I might actually get another one as well, but I'll see. Uh, once I sell my other one, I'll, I'll think. I'll see though. I'll see what comes up. Hey Tech for your needs. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'll wait a few minutes. I'll wait a few minutes just before I get going. Um, you know, just to, just to see what's happening and all that. Um, hey Stephen. Good to see you, mate. I saw your comments the other day about the um, about the Mac about remote controlling, it's, it's quite interesting. I'm still kind of going back and forth as to what to do with that. Um, I'll have a think about that as far as what to do. Some of these Macs are so overpriced, it's ridiculous. What is your view on moving parts like fans on motherboards? What, what, do, you mean, what do you mean by moving them? So just for the benefit, I know you guys are watching live, but for the benefit of anyone who is watching later, what I normally do is just, you know, kind of wait five or 10 minutes and just chat to you guys to give everyone an, an opportunity to tune in. Um, but if you want to get straight to the unboxing and you're watching this later, just, you know, just scrub forward, move the video forward and you'll see the unboxing of the laptop. Hey, host up. Thanks for tuning in. Um... What do you mean, Hugh? What do you mean, Hugh, as far as moving the parts? What do you mean by that? What do you mean as far as moving the parts? I'm not 100% sure what you're talking about. That as far as just moving the mother the the fans on into a different position, you know, the PC fans. Are you talking about a laptop? I'm I'm I really don't know what you're talking about. Okay, AMD motherboards. Okay, so I assume you're talking about a PC, AMD motherboards. They have another fan other than the one on the on the CPU. Right, well, the one on the CPU, the fan, is, is that's normally called a heat sink. And it's what's put puts over the, the CPU because the CPU runs so hot, which is why you get these big all-in-one coolers and, you know, different um, heat sinks on top. Um... As far as moving that, the, the CPU fan, as you're calling it, the heatsink, that's designed for the CPU. Um, but then you've got general case fans. So, I mean, there's different fans that are in any kind of PC. And a PC, you might have the heatsink, which goes, goes over the CPU. Your GPU will have fans built in. But then you've got several, you know, several fans built into the case. And the fans that you use in that case, well... You can put them inwards or outwards. It really just does depend on what way you do, you know, as far as the airflow goes. Um, there's a lot of different variations to do it. Um, the way that I've got mine set up is pretty simple. I've got the air drawing in from the front, from the front, drawing the cool air in, and then I'm pushing the hot air from the top and the back, I think. And then I've got fans coming from the bottom as well, or I can't remember the orientation I've got it, but essentially you can set the fans to go inward or outwards. Um, Hey Elcha, good to see you. Chipset fan, most X570 ones have one. I'm not sure, I'm not, uh, I, like it's, it's been years since I've had an AMD motherboard. Um, can I just say, before we go on, at one point I'm going to misspeak or like that because I'm sick. I've basically been sick for a week. I am drinking, I'm not even lying, about eight liters a day or something. I've drank, I've probably drank about four liters just up to now, you know, today. Um, or even more than that, and I'm still dehydrated. I feel like I've run a marathon. I know that talking doesn't help me. Gigabit X57 Oris Elite. 
Right, so, but what do you mean by moving it though? I don't understand, but why would you want him, like, is it embedded into the motherboard? We have a mini fan, right, okay, I'll have a quick look at this. Um, I'll have a quick look at this and then I can start talking about what we should be talking about. As far as the laptop goes, but I'll quickly check this. I just want to see what this is all about. Uh, all about. See what I mean? Am I speaking? Um, okay. Well, I've got a, I've got a gigabyte as well. Um, right. So you've got it here. So this, is this the fan you're talking about here? This one here. Is that the fan that you're talking about? Is this the fan that you're talking about, Hugh? I'll, I'll answer that question in a second, Ultra, in two seconds. So I can see there's a fan here. Uh, I'm not sure, is that, I mean, the CPU is over here uh, to the right. It looks like, I mean, is that close to the, is that compl close to the, the back there? I'm not sure what that's for. I'm trying to think what mine is. Mine is a little bit different to that. Mine is a little bit different to that. I, I, to be honest you, I'd have to check the, the, the manual. Moving parts, i.e. a fan which moves. I don't understand why you'd want to move it though. Isn't this fan, is it not embedded? Oh, you mean just what is my general view? Sorry, right, sorry, I misinterpreted what you were saying. I thought you were saying that you want to move that fan. Um, as far as fans being built into motherboards, well, most of the time they're there for a, a reason. They're there because they need to cool something down um, and it's to stop something from, you know, burning up or something. What you might have to do, Hugh, and I assume that you're asking this because maybe the fans are a little bit too loud, maybe they're doing your head in, maybe they're driving you crazy. You can amend the fans and the software that allows you to change the fan speeds, but you can go into the BIOS and do it as well. But you know, read up on it because generally, you know, these fans are there for a reason. They're there to protect components that can that can overheat. Yeah, I've, I've been looking at that. I've been looking at the, Stephen, I've been looking at the 3950X. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'd have to have a think about what I did, you know, whether I build a completely new laptop, uh, laptop, build a completely new PC or whether I just take the motherboard and CPU out, CPU out and sell it. I don't know. I'll need to have a think about that. Okay. About the laptop here. About the laptop here. I've been talking for seven minutes. So Ultra was asking there. Um, Ultra was asking there about how much this laptop uh, cost. So the one that I've got is the Dell. As you can see there, the Dell. The Dell Alienware M15. Now, this is actually a year old. It's from the Dell outlet. There's a new, newer version out now. The reason I didn't go for the newer version, I think the newer version looks great. I think the design is really cool. But the newer version, for whatever reason, the 15-inch version of the Alienware M15 R2, or Mark II, is limited to 16 gigabytes. I don't know why, but I frequently need at least 20, you know, at least 20, 25 gigabytes. I, generally, I need 32 gigabytes. 64 would have been nice, but this first variation can only do 32. But that's still a lot better than 16, which is why I've went for this one. So as far as the cost, I've paid £1,580 total. So that's what I paid, £1,580 total for this laptop. For those of you who haven't seen it, this is roughly what the design looks like. Now, this is a little bit different spec from what I've got. I don't have an OLED screen. Um, I do have the 8750H though. So... As far as, as far as the specs goes, this laptop has an 8750H, it's got 32 gigabytes of RAM, it's got a 512 gigabyte um, SSD, but I'm going to take that out because the, the Toshiba drives that they use are quite slow. It's got a 4K screen, it's just LCD or IPS, uh, yeah, it's like an I IPS screen, it's not OLED or anything like that, uh, IPS L LCD. And this has got a 2080 Max-Q, so this is going to be a really good laptop as far as gaming goes. Now, 8750H is, is a, it's a hexa-core, six cores. I would have preferred to have got, hey Toast, I would have preferred to have got something that was an octa-core. I wanted something that was an eight-core CPU, but the more that I looked into it, the more I realized that 
getting this was probably a little bit better because the GPU performance is so much better than something like an XPS 15, which has a 1650. This is infinitely better than even the new MacBook 16. The graphics card on this would just smash the the X, the MacBook 16. Um, but the 8750H on this as well punches above its weight. Now, this is a reminder. I'll leave a, a link to this here. I'll post it here. Um, sounds expensive. Actually, it's a lot cheaper than you would think. Um, so this is this one's not the um, exact model that I've got. Mine's just got a more powerful GPU. But one thing I will note here is that if you look at the, the CPU performance, which is here. Now, you can see here, this is the CPU performance. Now, you can see that it's here and it goes, you know, all the way across here. This is like the, the performance benchmark for the 8750H and the Alienware M15. But what's interesting is that you've got laptops such as the Razer Blade, which has got a 9750H CPU, which should be like 10% quicker. But you can see that the actual real life performance is a lot worse. It's significantly better in this. And this is a reminder, this is a reminder that it's not just the specs. The specs don't tell you the full picture. You have to look at the chassis, the thermals, the thermals, how the laptop is handling it all and all that. Yeah, it's got a five a 4K screen. Um so the reason I'm saying that is that this performs better than a lot of 9750H uh, laptops. But even the XPS 15 that's got the 8-core i9, this isn't that far behind it, despite being a CPU that's only 6 cores. So, um, well, because it's a 4K screen, because it's a 4K screen, it's only 60 hertz. And that is, that's one of the downsides to this, I guess, in some way. The thing is, guys, I looked at, um, I looked at the, the 144 hertz screen. The 144 hertz screen for this laptop is actually cheaper, much cheaper, like 300, 350 pounds cheaper. And that would have, you know, allowed me to play games at, you know, ridiculous resolution, uh, ridiculous frame rates and just, you know, the refresh rate would be fantastic. But the problem is I need to do video editing on this. I need to do Photoshop on this. It's not just a gaming laptop. I will be doing work on this. I will be doing a lot of gaming on it as well. I'm going to be taking it to my friend's houses so that we can play Call of Duty and different things. But I did need a 4K screen. I wanted a 4K screen for video editing, for Photoshop, for, you know, different things that I do online. I'm so dehydrated. But what that means is that I will be limited to the 60 hertz, but I can, if I want, run a lot of top games at 1440p, and there might be some games that I could play at 4K, and from what I've heard, some, some games at 4K just look unbelievable. So I don't have that fast refresh rate, but um, yeah. It, it's hard to find something that ticks all boxes. You know, it's not like there's a 144Hz 4K screen on the market. There isn't, certainly not in the laptop world. So guys, are you ready for the unboxing? Uh, Steven, it's the 2080 Max-Q. So it's, it's not going to give you the same performance as... Um, it's not going to give you the same performance as a 2080 in a desktop because, of course, it's in a laptop. Um, it's getting less power. Um, but if I go down here, where have we got here? Right, so as far as how this performs, I mean, I'm trying to see benchmarks here. In fact, I'll, I'll search for a different benchmark here just to show you. 2080 Max Q. Now, again, to, to, to really kind of reiter reiterate this, I keep misspeaking because it... <laughs> to really reiterate here, the, the Alien M15 here, if you look at the specs, this performs much better than the specs suggest because there's good thermals, because there's a lot of power going to it. It can still throttle, of course. Um, I want to show you benchmarks, actually. Unboxing time. Yes, unboxing time. I just want to show you a quick... See if I can do this. Um... For the life of me, I can't find. This is the thing. If you if you do this on, is this? Let me see. 
So you can see, I mean, this is just as a this is a, just a very very quick look at some specs I found there, and you can see there's a like the 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 twenty eighties at the at the top there, and then there's the the twenty eighty Max Q, and there's ninety watts of the Max Q version, and there's ten seventy and all that. But really, you know, you can you can analyze these things too much. But compared to like something like a twenty sixty, I might get twenty FPS more, maybe more than that. Yeah, yeah, 2070 speeds, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, no, I've actually bought it here, I've got it here. Right. Should be uh, a fairly easy unboxing. That was like the easiest unboxing ever. <laughs> I've got scissors and everything out here in case anything goes wrong. Right, guys, are you ready? Um, you all good to watch this? You all good to see this? Um, yeah, I just want to quickly check something with the stream. Right. So now this is refurbished. I really do like the way I really do like the way that Dell package up their outlet laptops. I think you know this padding is really really good. So safety. It's all about the safety, guys. Here is a, a MacBook for travel and a powerful desktop for gaming. Right, so they've packaged this up the same as they had the Dell Precision that I got. And basically, at the side here, they've got the power brick. I'll need to keep everything nice. So this is 180 watts. Can you see that? 180 watts. And I must admit, like you guys know, I bought the Dell Precision 7540 and Yes, I had to send it back, but I was really, really impressed with Dell. I really was. And I know that they're not known as being the best computing company in the world and, you know, there's problems. And, and I had to send my laptop back. But the way that they handled, you know, the way they handled everything, I was quite impressed. So, let's get that out of the way. Get this sexy little box out of the way. Is 180 watts high for a laptop charger? It depends, it depends because my HP ZBook G3 is 150 watts. The, the MacBook 16, which is just to come out there, that's 100 watts. If you buy an ultra low voltage uh, laptop, here is the Surface Pro 6, that's like 60 watts. It depends on what you're doing. But at the end of the day, that's still less than what you'd put into a desktop. What screen size is 15.6. 15.6. So this is it here. Now, right off the bat, you know, at the front anyway, doesn't look to be any damage. Right off the bat, I'll say that, see this little alien thing? I, I really don't like it. I really don't like it. It's naff. I'm actually tempted to buy a sticker to put over it. I really don't like this branding. It makes me look like I'm a 15 year old. Um, but there you go. That's what they have. Um, and I tried to put that kind of annoyance aside because it really is about the specifications inside um you can custom rgb it yeah i mean I, I, i'd prefer something a little bit more clean a little bit more kind of business like um sorry i'm getting really dehydrated because i'm talking a lot i do have the flu i might i might be able i'll, I'll look into that shadow fox i'll look into that i'm not sure if you can pick up I believe you can pick up a more powerful charger and maybe that is something that I can do because, you know, that's something I wouldn't mind doing, you know, picking up the um, a more powerful charger, if it's, as long as it's not too big and all that. Um, the charger looks okay. It's not too heavy. Like, I've got ones that are heavier than that. You're right, Jeffrey. You're right, Jeffrey. Some of the older ones, like when Alienware's were pretty much the size of your PC, uh, some of them, some of them were... Yeah, pretty out there as far as the branding and all that. I think the latest editions look even better. A razor mouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that maybe that's what I should do. Um yeah, maybe that's what I should do. Uh I don't know. But right, okay, I just quickly looking at it. Um so far it looks like this is mint condition, but 
It is overhead camera time, guys. I can quickly jump over to the overhead camera and I'll give you guys a closer look at what this is all about. But any questions before I do that? Is the Asus FX50 5 dy 128 120 hertz model good for 600 pounds? Has a Ryzen 355H and an RX 560X. I think there's a lot of good laptops in that range. Um, and maybe even look at the Dell G3 or the Dell G, is it G3, G5 and G7? Some of them are good, but they're huge. I think, I mean, I remember you sharing that Ultra and I thought that looked like a really good, um, I think it looked like a really good laptop. For a gaming laptop, um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Um, it's, it weighs about 2.15 kilograms. I'll bring up my other laptop just as a comparison. So uh, I'll jump over to the overhead camera. So here we go. This is it. This is, this is it. And this is my HP. I'm not going to put it on top here, but it's basically about the same size, you know, as my other laptop, more or less. This one is actually thinner though. This is actually, you know, this is like four or five years old now, and this is quite thin. This is only two kilograms. The graphics card and all that's too quite old in it, but it does have like two Thunderbolt 3s and all that. It's been a great laptop for me. Um, this is thicker, but it, it's not thick at all. I don't think this is a thick laptop. I don't think it's a, a heavy laptop either. Um... Yeah, thanks for the tip, Shadow Fox. Um, I saw, I mean, I mean I've, I've been posting on the Notebook Forum, which I used to post on years ago, and I've kind of posted a few times over the last week there. And, and a few people said that. And essentially what Shadow Fox is talking about is that when you're playing games, when you're pushing this video editing, whatever, you're you're obviously going, you know, the, the fans are at the bottom here. Well, some of the fans, I believe, you've obviously got vents at the back there as well. But you can improve the thermals a lot just by raising it. And you can put it onto a laptop stand or you can put it onto a laptop cooler or something like that. Right, so I'll jump back over. So I want to show you the ports. So I'll get this out of the way. Um, should we zoom? Should we zoom? Let's zoom down a little bit. Okay, so right hand side, we've got two USB type A ports. I believe they're 3.1. Uh, at the back there, what have we got here? We've got HDMI, Display Port, Thunderbolt 3, and we've got, this is what's called Alienware Amplifier. And this is quite interesting. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this, but I'll talk about this in a second. Um, we've got the power port there, and at the other side, we've got another two USB, oh, sorry, we've got an Ethernet port. Yes, that's an Ethernet port. I'm looking at this from the side. Ethernet port, another USB, 3.5 millimeter, and we have, yes, that's a Kensington lot. So, uh, headphone, USB, Ethernet, Kensington lock, power, amplifier, Thunderbolt 3, display port, HDMI, and two USB there. And all of that is without, without, I can connect to this without a dongle. And that's one of the things, you know, I'm, I'm all for, you know, Thunderbolt 3 ports and all that for connecting things, but. At the same time, it does make it impractical in certain situations where you have to always use a dongle. Now that now that um, amplifier thing, you see it in the back? Now, that's basically for Alienware's own eGPU. And Alienware's own eGPU enclosure thing, it's only like £150 compared to like £300 for the Razer and the Blackmagic ones and all that. Now... I'm not sure, I've not owned an eGPU, but I've done so much research on it that I've got a really good understanding of it. And eGPUs, e when you put it through Thunderbolt 3, you normally take about a 30% hit with your graphics card because there's only four lanes of PCI Express going through Thunderbolt 3. With this Alienware amplifier, you can apparently get 16 lanes, which means that you could potentially, say down the line, I could put a 3080 Ti next year connected to this laptop and get the full power of that graphics card, which is pretty impressive. I've seen some reviews though, it's not like it's the best solution in the market. Um, I just wanna quickly catch up with some of the comments. The grills in the top of the keyboard are 100% cosmetic and don't actually help with cooling. Is that, you, Shadow Fox, are you from Notebook Forum? Do you actually have this yourself? Any reason you didn't go for the AMG Fusion 15? What's that one, Shadow Fox? I've never heard of that. 
Um, does the new Apple Mac have a 3.5mm uh, headphone jack? I, does it? I'm trying to think. It's got four Thunderbolt 3s. I can't remember if it's got the headphone jack. Um, yeah, sure, you can, you can, you can hook up an eGPU using the Thunderbolt 3. I think with this, I won't do it because one, I've got the Alienware amplifier, which is much better. And two, there's no graphics cards in the markets that would actually make it worthwhile because this has got a 2080 built in anyway. Yes, it's the Max Q version, but you're going to take a hit via the Thunderbolt 3 port if you do go through an eGPU. Oh, thanks for your advice. Thanks for your advice, Shadow Fox. It's good to have someone there that's, that's got this already. 15% more performance. Is that all it is, Shadow Fox? Is it only 15%? Well, I guess that makes sense because, you know, graphics cards don't even use the full X16. Um, but yeah. Right. Time to open this up. Let's see this. Let's see this. So... I'm not going to open that with one finger. This is too heavy for that. It's actually quite hard to get that on with, with even with two hands there. Um, right, okay. Can you... That's not the easiest to get open. I'm not used to using my HP laptop. That was a lot harder than I thought. So, there's actually... I wouldn't say there's a lot of flex there. Hey, Zolf! Right. So, this is the laptop. And see if I can zoom down a little bit. Give you guys a little closer look at what's going on here. So, I'll maybe zoom out a little bit. Is that better? Right, okay, that's not too bad. Core i7, 8th generation. The touchpad is a little bit to the left-hand side. Um, so, th this is kind of a similar keyboard to what I had in the, the Precision 50, uh, 7540, where they've actually squeezed it down a little bit and they've put in a full-size keyboard here, but then, well, less than a full-size keyboard so that you can get the number pad. Now, if I get used to that, and I'm sure I will, I think that that's going to be very, very good because right now I've got a full-size keyboard. That's really, really good. But obviously you've got the bezels here and, you know, they've removed the, the kind of speaker grills at the side there to fit in this number pad. So I think that'll be quite good. Um, the, these are the, this is the part there, um, this is the part here that Shadow Fox was talking about how this is just cosmetic. They've actually put a sticker, like a, 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 you know, that part over there. I'll leave it on there just now, just in case there's any problems with the laptop. Um, keyboard looks good. Keyboard looks really good. I like it. Um, so yeah, I think it looks good. I think that's the power button. I don't know if there's any power on it, but I should probably get a charge on it first. Before, oh, that it does look like we have power. Um, I don't know what the battery life is, is like on this so far. I'll zoom out a little bit. So you can see the webcam up here as well. It doesn't have like a, a webcam protector, so I'll buy a little webcam protector thing for that. Um, does the lack of a dedicated page up, page down button bother you? Well, there is, there is page up and page down, Jeffrey. So just for the benefit of Jeffrey there, um, page up, page down. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, page up, page down. It is obviously part of the number pad. Um, I probably have to maybe disable the number lock so that I can put that up and down. But no, it, it wouldn't really bother me. So it's just loading up just now. Now, okay, so um, continue. Why am I doing that? It's not touch screen. What am I doing? Um, why is it only saying English United States? I'm not from the United States. So I'm, I can quickly get through this now. I'm, I've obviously, I'm not connected to Wi-Fi or anything like that yet. Hey there. I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. Skip. Make your a little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. Great. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way, and if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone I Yes, be quiet. Be quiet. Be very quiet. I can't be bothered with you. Um so So essentially this part obviously this is where most people would set it up. I, I want to quickly just set it up um to see you know what the the, the display is like, but um 
I'm not actually going to be keeping this OS as far as I'm going to be clearing it. I'm going to be installing Windows again. I'm going to be downloading all the drivers again. Um, simply because, you know, as far as hard drive read and write speeds, um, I, I'm not impressed with what I've seen in reviews as far as, you know, it's, it doesn't look that good. So I'm going to continue with the limited setup just now. I just want to look at the comments. I've obviously missed some of them here. Hey Jeffrey, um, why do why do people need a number pad opposed to the ones above QWERTY? Um, Hugh, if you've ever did a lot of writing, a lot of coding, that number pad is amazing. It's amazing, and at the top, it's just a pain. It's just so much easier having it at the right hand side. It really is. If you open up the M15 and take out the heat sink, you'll see the fan. Shroud covers the grill on the top side of the keyboard, so it doesn't do anything. Okay, right, you okay, talking about that part, right. Is the keyboard RGB lighting or is it just blue only? Don't log into Wi-Fi if you want a local Windows account. Um, I'm not gonna, I, I don't have my Wi-Fi password just now anyway, so um, yes, I'm not gonna be logging in just now. I, at, at this point, I really just wanna check that everything's okay. Um, hey, Flood of Sins. <laughs> Hugh, you might not actually be wrong with that. There is a very good chance that this video will get copyrighted because of Cortana saying that. It, it will not surprise me if that happens. It will not surprise me. Um, Shadow Fox keyboard is four zone RGB and customizable. Yes, right. So so what Shadow Fox is talking about, just to kind of pick up what, from what you were saying there, um, you can't individually change the lights here on the keyboard. So you can't, like for example, I couldn't make a WASD, I couldn't make these like stand out with a different color. It's about different zones. So you could make it like red blend into purple, blend into blue, that type of thing. Um, it really isn't something that bothers me at, at all. It really isn't something that bothers me at all, if I'm honest. Um, I know some people do like that. I know that's something that they always look for. It, it really isn't something that, that I care about, if I'm honest. But for some people, it was something, um, for some for some people, it was something that, you know, was maybe a negative. I'm just, I remember the Windows install experience was not this annoying. Let apps use advertising ID. No, just let me, let me actually play the computer, play my games. Um, yeah. They always do this, don't they? They keep adding more and more steps and more and more steps. It's just, just tell me my name. I can set this up later. Um, thanks, Shadow Fox. I do appreciate you dropping by and I do appreciate you giving you all your, all your, your feedback on this because obviously I'm looking at this. Yes, I've looked at reviews. Yes, I've looked at video reviews and I've kind of checked out this laptop and I've, I've seen what it's all about. But it's one thing looking at reviews. It's another thing having the laptop uh, and seeing what it can do. So I'm at, I'm at this stage, by the way. Um, as far as the display goes, I can't really tell what it's like just now because I've got a blue screen. I don't really have anything to see what the screen is like. Um, build quality wise though, it, it does look really good. It, it, you know, it's not, there's not any flex. The actual front part of the display is, it's really solid. Really, really like it's really stiff. And you probably saw that when I was opening it up. Um, <laughs> I was having difficulty actually lifting it open. I don't think that's um, I don't think that's that bad. Fallen order on it is that uh, I saw that advertised just out, or oh, it's one of the games that just out recently. Well, the thing is, Shadow Fox, I I use my two kilogram laptop there on my lap, and I think this will be okay on my lap personally because I'm used to using a two kilogram laptop, but um. So counterintuitive, do not upgrade to the latest BIOS. You will lose custom fan curves and the laptop will turn into on the fans less, which leads to higher idle temperatures. Right. I'll need to look into that. That's something I hadn't even thought about as far as the BIOS. I, I, I need to check that. Um, so there's a little bit of battery life here. And obviously when it comes to battery life, this isn't going to be um, the best laptop in the world. Now, um, NVIDIA control panel. In fact, I don't want that. I want 
display settings. So we'll have a look here and let's zoom down a little bit. There you can see 3840 by 2160 and it's scaling at 250%. Um, you know, this is a 60 hertz 4K screen and you know, black background right now. I won't be doing it any justice right now, but it does look really nice. It looks really, really crisp. And, you know, as I was saying, there, there is a... There is a part of me that thinks, well, 144 hertz would have been amazing, but I'm going to, I'm going to be, um, you know, I'm going to be using this for photo editing, editing for video editing, for yeah, lots of different things. So it kind of makes sense for me to get the 4K screen. Um, um, let me see. So system information, we've got 8750H. In fact, I just I'll be as well just looking at the task manager. More details. So if I can get this down. So I quite like that as well. Like I'm not sure if that's coming through, but that, that actually goes down. It's not as far as like a Lenovo or anything like that, but not too bad. Um, so you can see it's got an 8750H here, which you can't see. Okay, you can see that now. So 8750H, um, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 26667. Now, I've actually got, you know, this is kind of surplus to requirements, I guess, at this point, but I've got a, or got an 870 EVO Plus there, one terabyte, and I've got 32 gigabytes of HyperX. It's the same speed though. Uh, I assume that the latency will be better than that RAM, but we'll see. Intel graphics, I think it's 620, is it? 630, oh, that's good. Um, and then 2080 with Max-Q design. You know, there's not a lot for me to say here at this point. I haven't tested it, I haven't did anything. Um, and, you know, from, from an installation point of view, from an installation point of view, I'm not going to spend hours installing the apps that I normally spending uh, spending uh, uh, spend hours installing apps like Adobe and Premiere Pro and Photoshop and all that because I'm going to be you know formatting a drive and putting it on here um so it's pointless to do all that because I'll just be copying files over again but what I'm going to do is shut it down just now uh first impressions it looks quite good I think it looks quite good I, I, again I don't like this alien logo crap if I'm honest <laughs> A uh, good question, Shadow Fox. Actually, I really should have, I really should have checked that out. Okay, so I'll open this up in a second. I believe it's it was a M two point five, I believe. Um, I'll double check that. I just want to, I want to just double check the battery before we delve into it. Does it look easy to change the drives and memory? Yeah, I don't think. I don't think it's that hard. To be honest, the, the Dell Precision that I had wasn't difficult either. Um, it wasn't difficult either. It was just, I ran into a, a problem. Um, okay, so, 60 hertz, where's the battery? 180 watts, does it tell me, actually? I don't think it even told me what the battery was. No, it doesn't tell me in the sales information. I don't think it actually told me. Oh, it's 60 hours, 60 watt hours. So, oh, in fact, I asked a question about this in Notebook Forum. So, basically, there's a 60 watt hour battery that kind of goes to like there. And then there's a 90 watt hour battery. Now, I think I've got the four cell 60 watt hour battery, which means that I've got a little bit of space here. But I'm not sure if I can put a 90 watt hour battery into this. I'm not sure. I've drank that already. Yes, so that's basically um, when when I bought this Shadow Fox, there was there was two different options. There was one that said it had two one terabyte drives. Now I didn't want to get that one because it, it, it was only one hundred fifty pounds more. But the, the two one terabyte drives were Toshiba, and after looking at some of the performance reports about it, I thought I'd rather get an NVMe that could do like over 3,000 just to give me a little bit more snap when I'm doing video editing. Um, but I was conscious of the fact that that might mean that I might end up getting 
an HDD rather than an NVMe slot. So I think you might, you'll know better than me, but I might actually have one M2 hard drive slot and one um, 2.5 inch hard drive. I'll, I'll find out just now, but it's one of those things, you know, um, it might not actually be that bad if that is the case, because what I can do is buy a two terabyte NVMe, put the OS on that, and then I could even buy like a two terabyte or four terabyte, two and a half inch SSD and just put all my games on that. Um, where am I here? Ah. Should I put on my wrist strap? Go official. So I don't know if you guys know this, but this is actually an anti electrical map thing. Um, so I shouldn't run into too many problems. But I'll put it on anyway. Where is that? I think I put that on it. So, is this the right one? Yes. Right. Hold on just now. Set that over there. So this is this is quite cool. This is quite a wee handy little thing just to put your screws. So let me see how many screws have we got here. We've got three. That's five, and then another four. Is that nine screws? I'm not sure if there's any other screws that I'm missing. I mean, uh, I'll check the manual for this. You can buy the Alienware 90 watt hour battery and forgo the HDD space and hook up with no issues. It has two M2 slots, which is nice. Well, that this is the thing. This is the thing, Shadow Fox. So what I could have done was get got that one, but I didn't want to be left with a lot of drives that I didn't want to use, and I'd be spending more money to get drives to then sell on. So. Um, do these do these screws come all the way out? Or what I'm going to do actually? Um, what I'm going to do is just quickly check the service manual just to check because some of these screws some come all the way out. Also, two screws back near the hinges. Correct? Yes, I believe so. I'm going to I'm going to double check that. Um, Okay, so what I'm looking at just now, what I'm looking at over here is this. Um, and it's got the six screws there. Oh, the M2.5, M2 in the back cover. Right, so that yeah, all the screws that I said um, are there. Loosen the screws in the base cover. Remove the six screws to... I'm just looking at... The number three, number three of these stay on the panel. The three screws towards the front stay on the panel. So these ones, one, listen, all right, great. So these ones stay, these ones here at the bottom here, these ones stay, okay. The screws seem a lot better so far. Um, and what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that is that I got the, the Dell Precision 7540. Fantastic little laptop, ticked so many boxes for me. It had an absolute beast of a CPU on it. But the, the M2 screws on it were practically stripped as soon as I, well, they weren't stripped when I got it, but basically the, the screws would not move whatsoever. They've been tightened so much that you couldn't budge it at all. So because this is the first time I've ever did this, you know, I'll try and use this kid's gloves, as they say. Um, loosen the six screws, M2.5, okay, so two, one, two, three, all right, I'll see. So it's these screws next, these six, and then there's two at the bottom here, I believe. Ah, okay, right, straightforward enough. Right, so these ones stay. Okay. These ones, will these come off? Yes, they do. So... Quite a, quite a useful guy to have around, Shadow Fox. <laughs> um, so what what you were talking about there, uh, as far as the 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 modifications, you've got changing memory. I think this maxes out at, at thirty two gigabytes. So I don't think there's much need for me to change the memory. Uh, the SSD is something that I'm definitely going to be changing. It's Black Friday in two days, guys, which is why I'm holding out. That's why I've not just rushed out to buy one, because I'll save a little bit of money if I can wait a few days. 
Um, so it's Black Friday. I'm going to see what SSDs I need and then buy appropriately. You know, I've got I've got a 970 one terabyte there, but I'm going to see if the, there was a there was a bargain there on a two terabyte drive. So I'm waiting to see if there's any two terabyte bargains on the Samsung range. But repasting the 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 GPU as well and the, is it the CPU? Sorry, I think the CPU is the big concern. Repasting the CPU is something I might do as well. Uh, I, I, I mean, so far, so good, Toast, as far as liking the computer. Yeah, so far, so good. Um, you know, th it, th there's only, um, there's only so much you can kind of tell at this point. You know, I've not really did anything with it yet. I've not pushed it as far as games go. Um... Let's see, there we go. Quite awkward at the side here. You know, I'm not used to doing it from the top, doing it from the sides a little bit different. These come all the way out. Yes, they do. So put those ones there. So Shadow Fox, if you're still watching, would you normally use a plastic scribe to pry it off? Or is it okay with your fingers? Um, let me see. Is this any movement here? In fact, I'll quickly check. I'm, I'm just going to... Ah, right. So the label at the top. Let's see what I've got here. Plastic card. I'll try a little plastic scribe and just see what I've got here. What I want you to do. So let me see. Let's see where it is you actually do that. Um, I'm going to just double check these are out enough. Yeah, I think they are. So what I'm looking at, just to, just to show you what I'm referencing on the website here, in the service manual it's saying rotate the base cover from back to front. So it's saying put the, the kind of sticker at the very top there and use a plastic scribe to get the, the, the base cover out. So that's basically what I'm trying to do at this point. I'm trying to do it in a way that doesn't destroy everything. So... Um, See, I'm not wanting to put too much pressure on this here. Am I being too careful here? Let me see. Where's that now? I'll quickly see something now. What's that? Oh, it's that sticker. It's one thing what that sticker was there. It's the sticker they've got over that grill area. Um, I might rotate the base cover from that and remove the base cover of the, the palm rest assembly. So, so they're talking about... Ah, right. Right, okay. Right, I can see what they're talking about now. So basically the base of the computer, there we go, getting it now. So 
I just need to get a little bit of space here. There we go. Let's see, is that enough? Let's see if that's enough. Um, it's saying it just left up, but it's actually easier. Do you normally, Shadow Fox, you're watching, do you normally pull the screen down in order to that? Do you normally do it like that to try and get a little bit more leeway? Oh, there's a lot of movement there now. This is a lot harder than, not hard, but it's a lot more kind of fidgety than I thought it would be. Um, right. You keep you keep the laptop closed. Is there a screw I've missed here, or I've not missed any screws? I'm just scared of just pulling it all the way out here. I don't think there's anything here holding it in, but it, it still feels kind of stuck in. I don't know if it's some of these screws that are maybe a little bit still a little bit. No, that's, that must be all the way out. I think those are as out as you'll get. Yeah, it's hard to open for the first time. I think obviously because I'm trying to make sure it's okay, I'm not going to cause any problems with it. You can actually, like if I go over the overhead camera, um, you can see that I'm trying to pry it open there and you can see that it's starting to come out there. You can see it's starting to come out there. So there's clips all over it. Right, okay. So it is starting to come come away now. I'm just not used to the mechanism as far as how it connects. It just feels it just feels like it's still kind of stuck on. And there's no way to try and get a grip to pull it up. So I'm just trying to run my fingers around it now to try and get it open. Use the plastic scribe as well. Um, go so the plastic in the gap and work your way around. Yeah, that's one. So that's what I'm trying to do here. All right, right, I can feel it there. I can feel that there now. Um, right, okay. There we go. Yeah, that's that's making the difference. Um, you're right about the clips. That's something they don't really talk about, and uh, something they don't really talk about in in that. Okay, so, so I need to pry this open. Right, so. It's almost, it almost feels like, um, see if you ever taken a keyboard out from a laptop like that, it kind of feels like that, that way we are trying to separate it. There we go. Finally, finally, finally. So, right now, now that I know what I was, now that I know what to do there, it would actually be a lot quicker to do that a second time. Basically, I was being a little bit too gentle. You need to kind of pry this open so that it pulls the case back and unclips. Um, so, overhead camera time, guys. I appreciate your your help with this again, Shadow Fox. Just to point me in the right direction. Um, so. There is the back casing. That's it there. And again, this is from the outlet, but everything does look... I mean, it, it does look on the surface. It does look okay. Um, the only thing I would notice is that some of these some of these things, you know, this this is obviously from the, the outlet, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure, sure what these are supposed to be like, but that one is full. That one's kind of smaller. I'm not sure if that's normal. That one does look like it's kind of broke off a little bit, if I'm honest. That one does look like it's kind of broke off a little bit. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. Um, not to worry. 
So, hey Prime. Right guys, so this this is the, the laptop. Um, and yes, I have the 60 hour battery. And it looks like that's where the space is for the, the extra hard drive. Um, but I bel well, this is the thing guys. So, so Shadow Fox, it looks like I have space for the 90 watt hour battery. It looks like I can just buy that battery, doesn't it? I'll show you what I mean. So, what have we got here? Right. Um, so you've got your, your wireless card up here. You've got your two RAM modules. And if I turn this around, maybe I can zoom in and show you this a little bit better. Okay, so you can see there's 16 gigabyte uh, Hynix memory, um, S666V, yes, probably not the best memory, I probably could just swap over this memory with HyperX, I'm not sure how much of a performance jump I would get though because it's still going to be running at the same speed, so I don't know, let me know what you think about that, and um, I'll turn it back around, zoom out a little bit, so what have we got here, well, Obviously, if you're going to do a repaste, you'd have to take all of this off. You'd have to take all of that off. Um, but you've got the wireless card, and it can be upgraded. You, there's a newer version of this card out, so you can upgrade that. Two memory slots. Now, it looks like there's two M2 SSD slots here, two NVMe slots here. Um, but, yes, you've got the, the, the thermal pad over it. So I, I've still got those two M, uh, M2 SSD slots. Um, here you've got the battery and you know you can disconnect that if you're doing any changes 60 hour battery it does look like it does look like I can replace this with a 90 hour watt battery but I don't know if that is something I should do or I shouldn't do because to be honest I will be having this plugged in most of the time um, see is what you're saying there Shadow what you're saying about adding a 2.5 inch hard drive Where's the actual connection port for that? Where is that? Oh, is that it there? I think I found it actually. Um, ah, right, right. Okay, so I need to call Dell or I need to buy one of the HDD cables. Right. So what I'm talking about right now is that... Can I get this off? Is this the right... In fact, that might be the wrong size. Maybe this one's a little bit better. Um, oh, I need to be careful with that. Be careful. Maybe change my. Let me change it. I think that's an, an M two point So uh, what I want to do is just quickly check the um, the M two drive here. So so this is the thermal pads for them to heat sink okay so that is what's going to co cover the two m2 slots and if i have i got it the right way i've got it the wrong way around now right so if i zoom in we can see what's going on here and we can see the drive. It is, where's the, the writing for this here? It looks like PCI Express, NVMe. I can't see the actual branding. I, I'm led to believe this is a, I thought it was a Toshiba drive, but I can't actually see Toshiba there. Uh, model SSOPEKK. Mm, I'm not sure, but oh, there it's like 512 there. I can't see the brand, the company name. I thought it was a Toshiba. Anyway, that's where that goes. So I've got, I've got room for two SSDs there, right? NVMe. Now, down here, there is a slot for a 2.5 inch SSD. Now, as Shadow Fox was saying there, I do have the option of replacing this 60 watt battery with a 90 watt hour battery. My opinion here is that I think more storage is probably more, t more worthwhile to me than at, you know, 50% more battery because I will have this plugged in most of the time. So what I might do is keep the 60 watt hour battery and then 
I've got room for an additional drive there. Now what I could do is I could just put in a standard, for example, a, a Samsung 860. I could put that drive in there. I could get a fast two terabyte boot drive, get another two terabyte drive there if I want. Now, obviously at that point, that's a lot of storage, but I, I do have a lot of options here. That's the thing. I have a lot of options. And if it's just a matter of playing games and storing games and storing files, the, the 2.5 inch drive makes a little bit more sense. Now, what, what Shadow Fox is talking about, you need the cable. If I zoom down here, so you can see that you can see the SSD, but can you see that there? I believe I've not obviously I've not referred to the ref the service manual for this yet, but you can see that it says HDD. So what I'll need to do is pick up uh what I'll need to do is pick up a, a cable to connect from the SSD over here to the motherboard using the cable there. This gives me a lot of options. I'm quite impressed by that. I think that's going to give me a lot of options. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. Um, I'll just put this back on. Oh, get the I'll get the right screws. The right screws would help. The screws are on a little bit better than they were before, but I'm not going to put them on too tight because I'm paranoid about what's happened last time. Um, so. Just to check what you're saying there. Go into the BIOS and disable express charge. It will degrade your battery faster over time. Right, thanks for that, Shadow Fox. Do appreciate it. Um, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'll check, was it 1.41 I want to be on? Yeah, that's, that's a very good point, Jeffrey. Sorry, I missed your comment before. That's a very good point about the fact they've given me a double, a double heat sink, despite the fact I've only got one SSD here. Um, I think... I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I do think it's quite cool. Um, on the on the subject of heat sinks, Shadow Fox, and I, I know I keep asking asking you here for your help. I do appreciate it. Um, on the subject of um, Wi-Fi card, sorry, the wireless card. What wi what wireless card would you recommend upgrading to? I know there's only like two or three options, but as as there one, as there one, cut the blue wire and submerge it in water. <laughs> Um, is there a wireless card that's better supported over others as far as drivers go? So I just want to again we'll get the we'll get the old zoom machine down. We'll get the zoom machine down and let me see. Zoom zoom zoom. Zoom zoom zoom. So um there I've got that's the W the LAN card there. Um and I could replace that with something a little bit better. I think it could be worth doing that just to get, you know, perhaps more reliable speeds, etc. But you know, obviously. Um, obviously I want to get driver support as well thanks Stephen, thanks for tuning in mate I do appreciate it um, my cable appears to have got connected on my chair what the hell is going on here Right. yeah as far as the flu goes that I've got I'm actually not too bad um, like I was struggling last week but it's just the dehydration I'm constantly dehydrated Which one do I have? See you, Stephen. Jeffrey, my favorite white card is a DW1560 because it works in alternative OSs. Um, no, I'll do it. I'll actually, I'll check my, I'll check my, um, okay. It says Dell Wireless 1820. I was just checking the email that I got from them. Dell Wireless 1820. In fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll just copy and paste this here um, and you can see the specs. So this is the specs of what I got. Kind of a little bit of a mess the way that's popping up on YouTube in the comment area. But um, basically it's, um, yeah, it's wireless 1820. So, yeah. Is it? Is it killer wireless? Let me see.
Um, it says DW1820. DW1820. Yeah, it's, re it's refurbished Shadow Fox. Sorry, I, I think I mentioned it at the very start, but you might have missed that one at the very start of the, the video. Um, I mean, it, to me, it looks mint condition. You can't actually buy this brand new. You can't buy this brand new anymore from Dell. Um, yeah, overall, though, it looks pretty good. I'm quite impressed. I mean, I think, considering this is a refurbished product, I'm... Hey, Ultra. Uh, considering considering this is a, a refurbished product, I think this is pretty good. In fact, what I'll do, I'll put this back in. Um, what I'm going to do for the meantime, I think I will pick up another couple of storage drives. That's my, my plan. Why not use my 970 Evo? I'll put it in just now. It gives me a, little, a few more options just now. Um, shit, is that different? I've actually got a box of M2 screws that I bought from Amazon just in case, you know, I need to use any better ones, but... Right. I'll put this in here just now. Intel AX200. Right, okay. So, I've not actually replaced a wireless card before. I don't think it looks that difficult I think I just re take the antenna out and you know kind of connect it to the new one I assume that's all you do um okay let me see if we get this in I'm going to loosen that a little bit Do I go the right way, right way, right way? There we go. So yeah, I'm going I'm going to um I think I'm going to pick up a couple of SSDs in the sales. Be very delicate with the antenna, do not pull from the cable. Right. I mean, I think if I was doing anything like that, what I'd do for each part is just... Oh. Uh, what I'd do is just look at some video tutorials before I did that, you know. I, I normally do that if there's anything I've never did before and I'm unsure about the process or just want to double check. Sometimes, you know, what I've been doing is referring to the service manual, but, you know, even, even for some things that I've, I've did before, I'll, I'll quickly check the service manual just in case there's something that I'm not sure of. Or just in case it's something that, that they do differently. Um, but sometimes the service manual misses out a lot of kind of useful information. So, so I've added a terabyte Samsung 970 Evo Plus. Um, it's just it's just connected to the anti-static mat here. I mean, I, I, I don't really need it to be honest. Let's be honest. These things are normally okay. But reconnecting Wi-Fi antennas is so much fun. Um, so I'll need to buy that hard drive cable I'll maybe buy the I should really take a note of these things I really should um, in fact I'm going to do that I really am going to do that so Wi-Fi Wi-Fi what are you saying there you are saying AX200 um, BIOS was 1.4 one, I can check through the comments again. 1.41, 1. 1.4.1. 1. Um, and turn off extreme. Because I don't want to say great advice, Shadow Fox, great advice, and then I, I forget about it because it's in a live stream. Uh, disable 
turn off extreme charge Yeah, most gaming laptops will have built-in Wi-Fi. This one's obviously good. It's got the Ethernet as well. Um, what what's your view? What do you what do you think, guys? So this has got this has got the the Hynix memory. Is it really worth me putting the HyperX in? This is a HyperX two six six seven thirty two gigabytes CL fifteen memory kit, and um, I'll give you guys a close up. So this is this is the the memory kit here, which I've got. I used to have my HP laptop. I took it out because I knew I'd be doing this. Hey, XK Pro Gamer. Do you think I would see a, a, a major difference though using this over the memory here? Do you think I'd see a, like a major improvement? I'm not sure if I would. So as far as upgrades go, I'm going to keep the 60 watt battery. I think I'll get a 2.5 inch hard drive. I just need to get the cable for that. I might replace the OS hard drive with like a two terabyte one. Um, I'll change the wireless card and I might do a repaste for the CPU. Just, you know, hopefully I'll get better thermals, but I can check all that later. Um, you think it's worth it for, you think it's worth it for that? Right, I'll maybe do that then. And, I mean, this, this memory does look like it's better. Just to show you what I'm doing here. HyperX. So... Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Do these ones back to front. There you go. Memory is the easiest upgrade in the world. And that is why, guys, that is why the new MacBook 16 annoys me so much. Now, I did a video about the MacBook 16 that's just out. And I know I'm going off topic here because this is a Windows laptop, but the Windows la the, the MacBook 16 does tick a lot of boxes as far as it's got a nice screen. You know, it's only two kilograms. It's got a hundred watt hour battery via USB Type C, but I hate the fact that they solder the RAM and the SSD and the battery and everything. You know, just look at what I'm talking about here. Look at everything in this computer. I can replace the battery. I can add three different hard drives here if I want. Two M2s, one 2.5 inch. I can replace the memory. I can replace the wireless card. I can repaste the CPU. You can't do anything like that on the MacBook 16. And they, they're charging about 400 pounds or so to go from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's, I realize you have to pay a little bit of a premium, you know, and it, it, I was happy to pay a little bit of a premium for the Surface Pro. I really do like my Surface Pro. I realize that, you know, has a lot of the same problems, but. Thanks, Eddie. Shadow Fox, you've been a fantastic help. You really have. Um, I've got this memory out now, so I've got a new SSD in there. I'm going to replace the OS SSD though with something a little bit better. Um, I'm going to look at that HDD cable as well. I'll do a little bit of research on it. Um, can you upgrade the CPU? No. I mean, technically, I guess you could, um, but these laptops are all designed for a particular CPU, etc. So let me see this. The way this goes on would be like so. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I do. I do appreciate your help with all of this. Um, and and everyone else has been. I, I know obviously Shadow Fox has been helping a lot, but I do appreciate everyone else helping out. Uh, I do appreciate it a lot. As you can see, there's a few things that I can upgrade here. Um. A lot of things actually I can upgrade. Okay, I'll get this here. And just get my getting all the screws and all that there ready. Um okay, these were the ones at the top. So well well that this is the thing as well. This is the thing, Jeffrey. Um 
this, I mean, uh, the thing is I kind of dip in out of the computing world as far as if I've got all the equipment I need, I don't research it as much as I used to. But, you know, when, when you've got a new computer, you stop looking at what the latest CPU is because you've just bought a computer, that kind of thing. Um, but one, th one thing is clear about the MacBooks, uh, well, just MacBooks in general. The specs don't tell you the full story. And I've seen a lot of articles and a lot of videos talking about that. For example, the last MacBook 15, 2019, you know, they'll advertise that it's an i7 I, uh, I hexa-core, and they'll advertise that it can go up to 4.7 gigahertz. But what they don't tell you is that that's burst speed, and you only really get 2.4 gigahertz or whatever it is. And you only really get that for a short period of time because they have throttled everything so much that the chassis is thin and light and sexy, but, you know, they have to actually throttle it a lot so that it doesn't overheat. So... You know, it's one of those things. I, I realize why certain design changes are implemented. But when you start looking at specifications, you realize that specifications don't tell you the full story. And that's what I what that's what I saw when I saw the XPS 15, when I saw these, you know, like the razor blade and all these. These things are, are fantastic, you know, as far as what they do, who they're for. But just for an you know, you're shaving off a few hundred kilo, uh, kilograms, grams, you're shaving off a, a few a few grams, like 300, 400 grams. But in doing so, you make it so that the chassis can't actually cool the CPU and other components. And what happens is they'll advertise that it's an i9, but you're only going to get i7 performance. This was one of the, the laptops. This was one of the laptops where it was actually the opposite, where this performed better than some CPUs that were higher spec, just because, you know, there's enough power going to everything. Leave that like that there now. Is that? I'll let you go through and make sure all that's kind of connecting up. Um, oh. Try to connect this up. I want to just push this part down. There we go. Right. Just want to make sure this chassis is clicking on. To be honest, it, 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 there's actually no need for me to actually connect this back up because I don't really want to start installing anything on this and messing about with it until I get the SSD that I want. Um, but I guess it's good practice as well. It's good practice for me to do that. Um, right, so I've got these two here. It's a lot quicker the second time when you do this. Um, the first time I really wasn't sure how it was connecting, but it really was just the, the case. I just had to open it up. I was just being a little bit too careful. I'm not going to go too crazy with the screws though. It's actually not too bad to get it open. The next time I do this, it will be a lot easier. Um, I do appreciate everyone tuning in though. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, it's always interesting to get a new laptop and you know, as far as the design goes, it's, this isn't the sexiest laptop in the world and quite frankly, the, the whole alien thing looks idiotic. I, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't mind it so much if it was kind of understated, but it's a little bit too in your face and I'm a, I'm a grown ass man. Um, but this ticked so many boxes for me. It's not the fastest CPU in the market, but like I was saying, it performs better than some CPUs which are newer or, or perhaps on paper faster. And the fact it's got a 2080 Max-Q, you know, this, this is going to be great for me. I can do live streams from this as far as streaming and, and using NVENC and coding. I can play games on this. I'm not sure if this will be able to handle gaming and streaming at the same time. I suspect not because gaming, you know, Gaming tends to use up a lot of CPU and GPU and all that, especially GPU, obviously, but... Um, but, yeah, there we go. Oh, I've, I've actually not put that screw in that well. I'm trying not to put screws in too much because I know I'm going to be opening this back up in, like, a day or two when I buy an SSD. I, I, really, I don't, really don't think I'm actually going to touch this laptop for the next few days because there's no point in me installing anything in you know, getting things sorted until, um, 
Oh, I forgot these ones. Until I have the new SSD. One of the ones that I saw actually, and I can share share this with you in a second. It's a really good deal here in the UK for, is that a Sabrent? Have you guys heard of Sabrent? I'm not sure if you guys have heard of that. Um, I think they call it Sabrent. Or Sabre. I really need to check this as far as what it's called. One, once I do a lot of these upgrades though, um, I need to have a little checklist here. Um, once I do a lot of these upgrades, I'll replace the Wi-Fi card, I've replaced the memory. Uh, I don't think you can get 64 gigabyte in this, but it'd be interesting to see if you could. Um, I'm going to add one or two new drives. And it's the sort of thing I can just add one just now and then add one later when a, a deal comes up. Um, and I'm going to perhaps do a repaste at one point as well. So there's a few things that I can do here, but overall, this is quite nice. Touchy feely. So it's, you know, apart from the little alien logo which lights up and all that, it, I think it's quite a, it's quite a nice design. I'm a, I'm a big fan of functional designs as well because, you know, my HP laptop here, um, it's actually a little bit thinner. But one of the things I always liked about this was ports. This has got Ethernet, three USB. It's got two Thunderbolt three in the headphone jack and all that as well. This ticked so many boxes for me and 4K screen and all that as well. Still performs great. The fans come on way too early with that. It's very annoying, but you know, it's, it's done a great job for me. That was another laptop I bought secondhand. You know, I buy, buy a lot of stuff secondhand. Um, don't, yeah, the Alien, yeah, the Alien, Alien uh, 51M, big 17 inch beast that weighs three, nearly four kilograms. That is upgradable. Um, but the thing, about, what, what they don't tell you though, Jeffrey, and they don't really tell you about this in the, in the marketing speak, um, is that, that you can only really buy the upgrade from them. It's not like you're going out and buying the CPU and the GPU and all that yourself. You have to buy special repair kits from them. And I remember seeing the news story about this because they released one recently, uh, the first you know upgrade kit, and it was expensive. Let, let's be honest though, Say you've got a, a, a 51M, like this 17 inch desktop replacement. By the time a, a GPU or CPU comes out, there's worth replacing, that's worth spending another grand on it. There'll be another Alienware laptop out that you could just sell the one that you've got just now, replace it with that one, and maybe even save yourself money and get a better GPU inside and a thinner chassis, uh, you know, lighter and all that as well. So, um, Right, I just want to show you, looking for this. So we are two days away from Black Friday, which is where we all spend money on things we don't need. But um, there are some things that we do need here. So this this is the one, so this, I'll, I'll bring this up. So this 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 is the, the hard drive, and this is one of the hard drives. I was ready to pull the trigger on this, I probably should have bought this a few days ago, if I'm honest. Uh, or, or was it earlier on that expired? Or oh, posted five hours ago, right? So there was. A, I should have picked. I should have uh, bought this earlier. I should have bought this earlier. So you saw earlier that I've I've got a 970 Evo, but um, this one here. If you can bring it up, come on. Right. So this is the type of drive that you might see, you know, on sale during the Black Friday sales. The Aditya SX 8200 Pro, um, read write speeds 3500-3000. So you're basically talking a Samsung Evo 970, you know, kind of plus type of speed. It's got a five year guarantee and all that. And it's under 200 pounds now. Now, right now I've got a 512 gigabyte OS, but from what I'm led to believe, and again, if I, if I go back to, if I go back to the notebook check review, um, you can see that the read and write speeds here, read is 3000, which is good, but the write speed is only 1100. And that's a little bit disappointing. And not, again, it's not a deal breaker. It's not a deal breaker, but writing is important when you're doing video editing because when you're writing to the file, it can affect the rendering speed and, you know, live streaming and all these different things. And that's why I'd prefer to take that out, put it into an enclosure or something and just use that drive for something else. So. Yeah, I might just get a two terabyte OS and put it in and then I've got two other drives that I can use and I can hot swap them, change them when I need to, put a different drive in there. Um, because this has got that, um, let me see. Yeah, because it's got a 2.5 inch drive there, 
I can put in something like this. That's 960 gigabytes for 67 pound. I could put in a one terabyte, two terabyte, three terabyte, four terabyte drive, whatever. I'll see what comes up. And I can put it in next to the battery. Yeah, 1000 rating per second. The thing is, the thing is with video editing, if you're doing a 1080p file or a 4K file and the hard drive is the bottleneck, then I don't know if the hard drive is the bottleneck here. You know, I don't, I've not tested with the CPU, etc. But but um, the, the real reason to buy these faster drives is for things like that because gaming applications might not actually utilize that kind of speed anyway. Um, but for video editing, for you know, rendering all these different things, writing speed can be a big factor. At the end of the day, though, you're spending a lot of money to just shave minutes or seconds off, but it's a lot of money up front. But when you're doing this day to day and you're using these things every single day for two, three, four years, sometimes it pays to just put the money down, get the drive. It's a little bit quicker, and then you know, you can get those fast speeds. Um, so, yes, at that, I will bid you guys adieu from me and the Alienware M15. Um, at this point, I don't really know much about this. I don't know how the 2080 performs. I don't know what the thermals are like. I don't know what the fans are like. I don't know what the performance is like. But as far as the ports go, I'm pretty impressed. The, the actual condition of the laptop, it, it looks brand new. I, I don't really see anything that suggests that this is... Damage. The only thing, the only thing I really noticed was some of the kind of casing, the parts of this casing. It looks like some of the screws were maybe a little bit worn off. Apart from that, I didn't see anything, uh, any, anything, any major problems with it. That's what I'm trying to say. Um. So, any further questions before I log off? No questions. Your honour. I'll leave a space. I know there's a delay in the live stream. Um, yeah, that I'm just I'm just looking there. That that drive's popping up a lot. There's, there's actually the one terabyte version of that drive as well for a hundred pounds. Well, so there's a lot of options I've got there, as far as, um, you know, as far as uh, storage goes. But what I need to do is if I format a brand new drive and put it into this, I need to download all the drivers and do all that. So once I get the new SSD, I can do that. I can do it all fairly easily. I don't know whether I just put the, the Samsung 970 Evo as the SSD. I might do that anyway, but I'll, I'll see. I'll wait to see what deals uh, pop up. I'll, I'll wait to see what deals pop up. But when I pick up that, um, what did he say it was? Wi-Fi AX200 card. I'll, I'll, I'll check the BIOS and all that. I'll turn off Extreme Charge. You know, Shadow Fox was giving a lot of good suggestions there, so I'm going to read through more about the laptop. But uh, at this point, yes, everything seems to be okay. I've actually not tried the charger yet because, yeah, everything was working okay. But uh, yes, at this point, guys, I'd just like to say thanks for watching. Thanks for all your advice. Thanks for tuning in, you know, posting a lot of comments and all that. I always enjoy, I always enjoy your live streams, guys, so if you want to... You know, participate in future live streams, just hit the bell icon and all that. Um, I'm not going to beg you for it, but if you enjoyed the stream, yeah, you can subscribe. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll let you know how I got on with this laptop as far as upgrades go. But until then, thanks for watching and take care. It is time for me to sit and relax because I can't talk anymore. I need water. I need more water. Right, guys, until next time, take care. Cheers.